Hello everyone and thanks for coming to see this talk. My name is Dario Fagioli. Here in this slide you can find some information about myself, including some of the stuff that I do within the OpenSUSE project. If there is anything that is interesting to you that is mentioned here, feel free to reach out to me at these addresses. But now let's jump directly into the subject of the talk, which will be a talk about Linux containers. Now, I think that uh, what Linux containers are is something that we pretty much all know quite well by now. Anyway, uh, I just fished some not so random quotes from the internet about Linux containers. And if one um, reads them, he will uh, learn that uh, containers are a way to deploy and then run services or applications in such a way that they are isolated from the host and also isolated among each other. And we also can read that it would be a best practice for containers to be immutable. So it shouldn't happen that someone goes and modifies their content in a way that makes them different, that makes them uh, look different from the container image that uh, they are built out of. So with this in mind, let's move to uh, the actual subject of the talk which uh, um, which is two tools uh, one is called toolbox and another one is called distrobox and uh, they definitely uh, are tools that uh, have to do with uh, linux containers because they are tools that let uh, uh, someone uh, help someone uh, building and managing uh, uh, a special kind of Linux container. Why special? Because uh, uh, they can help us uh, build and manage uh, uh, containers that are tightly integrated with the host, so not isolated from the host at all. Containers inside of which uh, typically users run a lot of uh, even very different services or application, applications. Sorry and containers that uh, if modified they keep their state even if uh, this means that they diverge from the image uh, out of which they were created so basically uh, we are violating all the uh, best practices and all the quotes uh, from the previous slide and why is that well there are in my opinion at least uh, reasons let's consider some um, example situations so let's consider the first example situation, which is uh, you are using an immutable OS, an immutable OS such as, for example, Fedora Silverblue, OpenSUSE Micro OS, uh, maybe desktop or not, uh, endless OS uh, and others. In an operating system where uh, in general, we can say that the uh, root file system is redundant. And so it's not very handy, if possible at all, to um, install, for example, additional applications which on the other end is something that someone might want to do on an operating system for actually being able to use it. And this is one first example. Another first example is uh, when you do development work and you deal with uh, um, applications that you have to build from sources, uh, which have a lot of dependencies uh, and uh, without going too much into details, uh, uh, the the problem could be, for example, that uh, you install uh, uh, all these um, development packages uh, every time that you want to build uh, from source the application you're working on, QEMO in this example, uh, and then uh, you probably, at least I do, uh, forget to uh, get rid of them when you don't need any longer. Or maybe it's even worse, maybe uh, of some specific uh, uh, one or more than one uh, of these uh, development, development libraries, uh, you need a specific version. And so you have to install it manually. Uh, and this is not nice, not something nice to do on the main operating system you are also using for, uh, for actual work. And there are even more complicated cases. 
And this was the second example I wanted to quickly mention. The third one is, uh, uh, for example, let's consider how OpenSUSE Tumbleweed works. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is uh, our reliable rolling distribution from the OpenSUSE project, which I think we can say it's reliable uh, because we test all the uh, snapshots uh, with OpenQA before releasing them. However, what I think uh, um, often happens uh, is that users uh, have to or decide to add the third party repositories, such as Pacman for Codex uh, or uh, some other specific uh, official or uh, uh, less official ones because they want or because they need them. The result being that uh, what the user are using is not uh, uh, what we have uh, tested and so it means that uh, add, having added uh, these third party repository and having installed uh, uh, packages from uh, from there could have introduced uh, bugs or uh, uh, could cause uh, uh, breakages in the system that we weren't able to uh, to catch with uh, with uh, with testing that wouldn't happen if uh, this third party the, the, the software coming from the third party repository wouldn't be installed installed on the main operating system because at that point the main operating system would just be identical to what we test um, okay still in the same category of uh, keeping it clean let's consider a troubleshooting situation so when you're working at some point uh, there is a network glitch network network doesn't work any longer uh, typically, what uh, I think most of us will do is start to try to understand and figure out where the problem is and perhaps start installing, uh, if, not, if you are not there already, um, debugging tools, debugging and troubleshooting tools, uh, perhaps even uh, change uh, uh, configuration files and stuff like that. Then at some point, the issue is fixed, either by itself or, by, or because of our actions, whatever. Um, most likely, uh, a lot of the stuff that we have done, installing uh, new packages uh, or uh, the modifications that we have done on the system, uh, should be rolled back. But again, that's uh, probably something that uh, does not happen all the time. And it's in theory, in theory uh, potentially dangerous. Imagine a situation where this happens repeatedly, even over a long uh, time span. At some point, you don't know any longer what the status of the system is. Um, so how about uh, there is a way of installing applications if you are in an immutable OS, uh, uh, doing uh, your uh, development, uh, installing third party packages uh, uh, and applications, and doing troubleshooting somewhere else, so somewhere that is not on the main operating system. That would be quite interesting and quite useful in these cases because it would uh, help uh, prevent um, the, the, all the potential issues and problems that uh, uh, each of these uh, um, situations that we have seen quickly, uh, sorry for, so maybe too quickly, sorry for that, uh, can cause. Now, uh, what does it mean outside? Outside where? Okay, spoiler. Uh, I'm going to say and to suggest that we can do that in a container. However, it has to be a special container because we said that we want to be able to install their to install applications inside of, the, of that container. So it has to keep its state in the sense that it has to keep this application installed when we need them, when we enter the container because we need them. It has to be a container inside of which you can run our workload, so it has to have not only the tool that we need uh, for it uh, installed, uh, but uh, also all our files accessible from inside of it. And it has to be a, a container from which we are even able to perform uh, something like troubleshooting actions uh, uh, of, for the host, but uh, still being inside the container because we want, for example, to install the troubleshooting uh, uh, and debugging software inside of the container, but then debug a networking issue which is happening on the host, of course. So 
what what what's the technology that we can, what can be what can we use what's the technology that uh, allows us to do so uh, we can uh, use uh, a privileged podman or even docker container which is tightly integrated with the host which is exactly what we said at the beginning of the presentation of course we will uh, lose uh, everything uh, which uh, which is related to security because the container is that integrated with the host, it's a privileged one, but that's fine, that's not uh, a goal uh, for this talk, and it's not a goal for this uh, particular container and containers that you are talking about. So Toolbox, Toolbox is a project hosted here, the source code is here at this URL, which is basically a, <clears throat> a shell script that uh, acts as a wrapper for uh, helping uh, us to create and use and manage exactly the kind of container that I just described. So it's born with the troubleshooting use case in mind, but then it evolved and is useful uh, for uh, other uh, purposes as well these days. Um, anyway, if you are on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and you want to use Toolbox, you just install it with Zipper because it's in factory. Uh, if you are, for example, on micro OS, either desktop or not, you find it pre-installed. Uh, let's uh, see it in action uh, very quickly. So we, we want, uh, for example, to create a container and to enter inside of this container for doing uh, maybe some of the things that I mentioned before doing our daily job as developer or doing some troubleshooting or uh, whatever. Okay, this is how we do it. So toolbox, uh, it's name of the tool, it's also name of the command, then enter, uh, like enter where, uh, enter in the container and then the name of the container, which I totally made up for this example. Uh, note that the name of the container also kind of becomes the host name uh, of the, machine while, while we are inside of the container, while instead this is the host name of the actual host. Uh, toolbox uh, can, uh, the toolbox command uh, takes some parameters, which I'm not describing here uh, in uh, details. It also uh, can uh, read a configuration file, which can be this one, but also other ones and it pulls down an image out of which it creates the container that we want, uh, that we are asking it to create and inside of which we want to enter. By default, if you are an OpenSUSE, uh, it pulls this uh, special uh, toolbox image. It's, a, it's an image which is very similar to, uh, to our tumble with image, but with some small differences. Now I said uh, creating, uh, uh, using, uh, like entering inside as we have just seen, but also managing uh, these containers. So how does Toolbox help us uh, do that? Well, yeah, create, I mentioned, uh, enter, it was in the previous slide. We can use Toolbox run to uh, run a command directly from inside the container without even entering, uh, entering it. But then that's pretty much it. Uh, if we want, for example, to list the containers uh, or to remove uh, some of them, uh, there is no toolbox uh, specific command for these uh, activities yet. And we have to use Podman directly, which of course uh, it's uh, subop suboptimal sub because it lists uh, or uh, allow us to remove uh, uh, all the containers that we have on the system that Podman manages, not only the one that toolbox created, but this is the, the current situation. Um, the concept of rootful toolboxes is interesting and we will um, expand on it uh, uh, later. Just for now, let me quickly mention that it's possible to create or even directly enter a container uh, uh, adding the dash r parameter to the toolbox command line, which means that uh, the container itself uh, will not run as 
your default user so that would be dario uh, my user in this example but it will run as root and we will see what this means later now distrobox distrobox is something very similar to to to, to toolbox to what i just described and called toolbox uh, it's also a shell script it also wraps uh, uh, podman or docker for creating this special kind of uh, tightly uh, integrated with the host container and so on and so forth it's actually born to enhance uh, the toolbox uh, interface and uh, user experience uh, and uh, it quite managed to in my opinion do that uh, by quite uh, quite a bit for example one of the most interesting aspects is that you can uh, really use uh, uh, arbitrary images for that but we will uh, um, we will see more details about this in the reminder of the presentation um, if you are an open source example with uh, this box is in factory as well so you can install just install it with zipper uh, and even if you are on micro s of course you can install it from uh, from uh, from factory of course using the appropriate tool not zipper but for example transactional uh, update pkg install uh, with this when using this box you have to create the container first like this the syntax is very simple this box create and then the name of the container this box as well can uh, all distrobox commands uh, as well take uh, a number of uh, uh, command line parameters. Uh, just let, I'm not going into all the details here, just let me say that uh, uh, by default, uh, if you are on uh, OpenSUSE, on an OpenSUSE distribution, by default, uh, the image that is pulled for building the container um, uh, on top of it uh, is uh, our official tumbleweed image. This can be changed uh, on the command line uh, or also modifying, uh, um, I mean, writing the, 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 the appropriate uh, uh, entries in the distrobox uh, config file, uh, which is one of these. Uh, okay, after you have created the container, you can enter inside of it which happens with distrobox enter and then the name of the container. Uh, the output is uh, this nice uh, uh, status report of the various uh, stages and steps necessary for uh, initializing the container and, and actually entering inside of it. Be aware just uh, of the fact that uh, this will take quite some time the first time that you do it for, uh, for for each container for so for a newly created container the first time that you enter inside of it uh, it's going to take a while but it's only that uh, one first time after that uh, it's going to be really fast toolbox didn't but this box has a um, dedicated management interface for uh, for its containers so it's possible to do this box list this box stop this box ram rm sorry and these are all commands that uh, will affect uh, uh, only the containers that this box created and non, not all the containers that you have uh, on the system managed by podman or docker or whatever um, and for each of these sub command there is uh, of course a uh, an inline help uh, which can be um, printed on the console with uh, dash dash help. Uh, this troubles as well as the concept of uh, rootful containers. Uh, and uh, similarly to toolbox, uh, you can create, enter, list, stop, remove a rootful container. So a container that runs as root on the host by just using the distrobox commands uh, and uh, adding the dash dash root uh, option. Okay, now something that I've mentioned multiple times is that uh, distrobox and toolbox containers like uh, all other Linux containers are uh, uh, made, are built uh, out of images. And, um, and I said that uh, on OpenSUSE the default uh, image that is used is the uh, well, it's the toolbox image for toolbox and the uh, tumbleweed image for, uh, for this toolbox. However, I also said that it's possible to change uh, this uh, image and to 
tell Distrobox or Toolbox to use a different uh, base image for uh, your containers. And so, for example, we can use a Tumbleweed image if we are on Tumbleweed or MicroOS, but we can also use the tumble, a Tumbleweed image if we are on Leap or a Leap image if we are on Tumbleweed or even, uh, in theory, uh, try and build containers out of images of different distributions, like Fedora on, if we are on Leap or Arch, if we are on MicroOS or Ubuntu, Debian, wherever we are uh, as an host. Now, how well does this work with uh, either tool? So for toolbox, uh, it kind of works, uh, but uh, this uh, especially, uh, and I mean, especially using uh, images uh, which are not open user images, uh, this, uh, this has never been the goal uh, of the project. So probably never be. Uh, at least to achieve full compatibility. So I think I could say that as soon as the image has uh, pseudo pre-installed, uh, things should work. And it's also the case that uh, some of the images for, for the, the images for uh, some of the main distributions, we also try to fix them up and make it work in toolbox, in the tool, in the script. But we don't go, uh, out a great length uh, uh, toward that to, toward that goal. So if you are using uh, non stardust images with toolbox, there might be more, probably trivial, but still uh, annoying issues that you will have to, to solve. On the other end, uh, for Distrobox, uh, it uh, actually was one of the main go the main goal of the project. And uh, uh, with Distrobox, it is indeed the case uh, that uh, you can use uh, lots and lots and lots of different uh, images uh, of uh, a lot of uh, uh, existing distros uh, as a base of your containers, no matter where you are as an host. And uh, the, the, the uh, upstream project uh, run automated tests uh, and optimize the, the script to work well uh, with uh, all the various images. Uh, uh, so that uh, in, to, to achieve the goal, the, the, the result that uh, as many distributions, as many images uh, for, from different distributions uh, work well with uh, Distrobox. Then it's, uh, we, we can say that it's another, it's another use case for these tools and for Distrobox in particular, because this means that, uh, yes, you are on, say, let's say you open SUSE Tumbleweed or open SUSE Micro S desktop as an host, but if there is an application that only runs in uh, some other distro and, so, and this distro is uh, uh, as an image which is supported by Distrobox, then you can run that, um, that application as well by just creating a Distrobox container uh, out of that image. Or maybe you can use it uh, you can use Distrobox and uh, the image of a more updated distribution if you are uh, stuck or if you like to stay on a more old or should I say stable uh, distribution for the for the main and base OS or or if you want to do or it could be very handy if you want to do development uh, or maybe packaging for uh, any or for for uh, whatever distribution for a distribution for which you have an image no matter uh, which is your actual, um, which one is your actual uh, host OS. It is also possible to point uh, both Toolbox and Distrobox uh, to images, to custom images, so images that uh, you are uh, um, making yourself uh, because you want uh, something specific or special to be already there inside of your containers. And for toolbox, this is, uh, I don't know if I should say recommended, but uh, it's uh, probably the best way of overcome some of the rough edges that uh, the tool has, for example, for running when running graphical applications, and we will see about this later. Um, in Distrobox, uh, if you're using Distrobox, is of course also possible. However, it's also possible to custom, let's say, customize the image, although it's not uh, technically correct. So the image uh, can still be the out of the box and the default one of the distribution that you want to use uh, uh, as a base of your container. 
and you can use and I defer you to the official documentation for the details on how to do that, that you can use these uh, special command line options for, uh, for example, adding packages uh, to or uh, doing some, uh, even some more advanced configuration on the image itself, uh, on the default image, uh, during uh, the container creation and initialization, sorry. So what about rootful, rootless, uh, whatever containers. I mentioned these terms and I promised that I would uh, um, explain them better. Okay. Uh, as you may know already, Podman supports rootless mode. So you can start a container as a user and then inside of that container, uh, you can have your user configured inside of it, which is exactly what Toolbox and Distobox are, do, are doing. And you can uh, even become root, for example, with sudo inside of the container. But uh, if the container has been started uh, as a user, started by your user, you will not be able, uh, uh, for example, uh, to uh, modify um, or even read, uh, depends on the permissions, things that on the host are uh, owned by the root user. That's the meaning of uh, rootless in Podman. Uh, on the other hand, if the container runs as root on the host, and specifically if a toolbox or distobox container run as root on the host, which means that you started with, uh, you entered inside of it, uh, you with the toolbox enter dash share or with distrobox enter dash dash root. Then this means that if you become root inside of the container with uh, just uh, sudo su, uh, then you have uh, basically the same powers that you have uh, when, you, when you are root on the host. And considering that, uh, as we said, uh, uh, large parts, uh, pretty much everything of the host is uh, uh, reachable, is exposed uh, inside of the, these special containers. Uh, well, be careful when, uh, when, when you do that. At, at which point one can think, well, let's just not do that and just use uh, rootless containers. It's uh, safer. Security is not... Uh, um, a goal, we said it already, but at least it's safest. I don't risk uh, uh, messing up my host. Well, yes, uh, all the time that uh, that it's possible, uh, I, I think you should do it, and I try to do it as much as I can myself. However, there are things that uh, you cannot do uh, from a rootless container. Just uh, as before, quick examples. Uh, we mentioned troubleshooting, and if you have to use uh, a map inside of a container for troubleshooting a networking issue on the uh, on the host, then for the command to work well, you have to be root on the host. So you have to be in a rootful container, and you have to become root inside the rootful container, and, and at which point you are able to use it. So for troubleshooting, uh, having... Uh, uh, rootful containers available is a uh, quite um, interesting uh, and important uh, thing. Uh, of course, it comes at a price in terms of risks, but if used with care, uh, it's very powerful. Uh, a bit less expected, but uh, it is what it is. For example, if you do RPM uh, package build with OSC, uh, currently, for uh, reasons that are too long to explain, that also doesn't work in rootless containers uh, either. And so, if you want to do that, you need to do it in a you want to do that in a distrobox or rootful or or toolful, toolbox. Sorry, container. You have to do that in a rootful one. Uh, as I said, it's it has to be possible, and it is possible, to run uh, graphical applications, to install and also to run graphical applications inside of uh, Toolbox and Distrobox containers uh, as well. 
and the containers are already configured to be able to uh, see the display, connect to the bus, uh, everything that, that it's necessary. So you just install the applications and uh, run them. Uh, if you do that in toolbox, uh, uh, just out of the box without uh, taking into account the fact that the image that you use for toolbox is a little bit special, uh, then you will have uh, an not perfect results and you have to figure out how to fix it. Distrobox, which is much more focused in uh, um, toward this, uh, this kind of use case, uh, everything will just work out of the box. Oh, even apps that uh, uh, need the re-rendering, you just have to install the NVIDIA KMP if you have an NVIDIA card like, like I have on this, uh, on this box. And I like it, and I like it as, a, as an example because it's weird that you have to install the NVIDIA drivers and also KMP inside of the container. But that, as soon as you do that, uh, even uh, application, graphical applications that needs uh, uh, 3D rendering work inside of the container and you see them uh, displayed in your uh, graphical sessions like they were running uh, on the actual host. Other nice examples of integration between the host and these containers is when you, for example, in GNOME Terminal can configure uh, the terminal tabs in such a way that uh, it is that they start uh, a terminal inside of a distro box or a toolbox containers automatically when you open it. Perhaps you can choose uh, specific shortcuts uh, for it and stuff like that. And another example that I mentioning because I use it daily and I like it very much is that for example inside uh, from inside GNOME Builder you can uh, uh, choose as application runtime so the place where the embedded terminals uh, uh, are opened uh, the pro inside inside uh, the, where the project is built and stuff like that and you can specify um, you can list and, and pick uh, as a runtime, uh, one of the toolbox containers that you that, that you have in your system, and even a, a, a distro box container or a whatever container you have uh, you have around uh, by um, listing all the Podman containers. Uh, some uh, uh, more distro box goodies. Uh, one is, for example, the fact that uh, with Distrobox you can create systemd enabled, let's say, containers, so containers that uh, have systemd running inside of them, uh, which means that you can start uh, services uh, and demons uh, inside, of, inside of, such, of these containers uh, using the traditional systemctl interface. This is a uh, not possible uh, uh, out of the box with toolbox it's possible that you would have to modify uh, toolbox itself instead with distrobox it's just possible by using the dash dash init um, parameter you can export apps so we have just uh, we have already seen that you can install applications inside of the container uh, with distrobox uh, you can uh, you can, uh, uh, once while you are inside of the container, you can um, configure the system in such a way that uh, apps installed there uh, uh, become visible uh, in the on the, with the launchers of the host operating system of the main OS, and so you can launch from them from GNOME Shell, even if there is no <coughs> virt manager in this case is not in, even installed on the host. It's also possible, uh, still without leaving the container, to uh, run commands and programs that are, uh, in fact, installed on the host. So, for example, there is no podman inside of this uh, TW test distrobox container, but with this special wrapper, I can. Uh, uh, reach out and execute Podman uh, on the host or Flatpak for what matters. So in summary, I personally think that Toolbox and Distrobox uh, are uh, two tools that uh, are uh, quite interesting and that uh, it could be worthwhile uh, giving it uh, a try. 
uh, if you are uh, using an immutable OS, uh, you probably are using uh, at least one of them already, and you probably knew about uh, either both of them or at least uh, about one of them already. But even if you are not using an immutable OS, and maybe you are not even planning to uh, try to switch to one, I think there could be reasons to uh, give them a look and see if they might help you in streamline your workload or keeping your host OS cleaner or whatever. This concludes my presentation. And if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you again for attending. Uh, and uh, yeah, 